Alrighty, on the left-hand side, we have Girl in the Wicker Red Dress 5, which begins like this. And on the right-hand side, we have the Girl in the Wicker Red Dress 5 Mixed Visuals, which begins like this. Now, on the left-hand side, we have Art Rage, Girl in the Wicker Red Dress Visuals 1. So you can see we have the first slide here is a pure orange background. The second layer is a red line. And then we have progressive new lines on top of that until we come to here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in New Realms, Episode 10, Research, Cycles, Patience, Move, Will. In today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting. We feel like we're sneaking up on our new conference presentation preparation. The proposal is due in less than two weeks. So, the, And the idea is still gelling, and gelling means becoming semi-solid and then ultimately solid. And we feel the same way, we felt the same way about the girl in the wicker red dress. The composition kept moving along and moving along. You saw that we're in version five at the moment. And each version seems to shift or wander in direction, feeling for some f intended final realization. We did, however, pick up on the use of the music as cloth. We'll talk about that a little bit more. We also experimented some more with Muse 4, the new version of Muse Score, our annotation program. So if we look at what we ended up doing with uh, so far with Girl in the Wicker Red Dress 5, we explicitly used um, our cloth metaphors. So the fabric, the fabric are these cadences. And the stitch... The, the line of thread that goes up and down through the fabric cloth is the, what we also call the backbone. That was a little soft. They wanted to give it some color or padding. So we added a double on marimba. Uh, the embroidery, which is ornament, uh, we used these figures called gamakas and ascending waves. So a gamaka is like this. And an ascending wave is like this. And when you double it on what we call the marimba color, you get the net. Then for padding, we were, and the aha we had was that we were looking up pad synthesizer in a previous chapter, and they said padding is literally where you make the music sound thicker or richer, and um, we, we call that shimmer. which we also call a slow melody. So we put all those parts together and then we came up with uh, this. And again, this is using three different tonalities. Each tonality has its own part of the composition and it ends over here. So then we decided we wanted to put, we recorded the score and posted it, but then we wanted to add the visuals, you know, the iteration between visuals and aural. So we had this reference image here, this wicker uh, dress form, and then we had hand drawn a, uh, a red stick figure over it. And then we wanted a few more images to go with it. And that's why we ended up using what's called Art Rage here. So, uh, as well as some other apps. So the nice thing about Art Rage is we, we got out our touchscreen laptop and we zoom connected it to the stream so we drew these by hand live on stream and we just you know spontaneously drew a couple things like this our idea was what we did with it was each of these layers could be disappeared at, at, or you know like a cartoon sequence or something so for that we ended up using magic music animator which is this thing 
and we made a scene for each layer. One, there, two, overlaid them and like that. So what we're going to do is play this for you. This is also, um, we recorded it and put it, uh, put it online. So we're going to play the composite girl in the wicker red dress five mixed visuals one. So that ends today's episode. What we really like about the animation is putting together some very simple pump uh, concept images. And uh, as we said earlier, sneaking up on some kind of composition that we could feel good about. In terms of the, we also like the cloth as metaphor that helped us kind of get past a stumbling block. We also, as we said, this is a Muse 4 version. And what we're using for Muse 4 is the crescendo and decrescendo, um, which are honored in Muse Score 4 during playback, but they're not honored in Muse Score 3. On the other hand, what we're not using from Muse Score 4 is the fancy schmancy new uh, uh, sound patches just yet because reasons. So we're still experimenting with the strengths of Muse 3 and, uh, and the strengths of Muse 4, the weaknesses of 3, the weaknesses of 4, and mitigating, trying to figure out when do we start a composition in M4 from the get-go, because if you, if you, once you convert to M4, the score cannot be open in Muse Score 3, and Muse Score 3 can still do some things that Muse Score 4 cannot do, and we've reported some of those. And we're having mixed results about reporting things, um, to be honest. Uh, so we're like a little wary of giving feedback to the Muse 4 uh, issues reporting bulletin team because they seem to be a little bit. A little, some of them seem a little bit sensitive. Some of them don't seem so sensitive, but if you get, you know, one snippy comment back, it, uh, it cuts down feedback in a heartbeat. On the other hand, MuseScore is an excellent program. We recommend it highly, and we just say uh, tread cautiously with MuseScore 4. That said... Our ideas for next time are to continue working with the visual and oral exercise that we began. We we were able to complete, um, what in the world happened here? We were able to complete an application and submit it for our uh, one of our three presentations that we're working on. So we felt good about that. And now we're working on a, a demo to go with it. It's called... Um, Composing in the Hybrid Metaverse, and we're going to feature results from this stream here. So uh, we have a cute idea there. Shout-outs to Silent Lurker, Methodic Innovator, and Steady Worker. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back, and do keep on streaming.